If you have more than one source inside of a parenthesis, how do you separate them? You separate them by using the semicolon. Remember, semicolon, no space before, one space after. So here we have Baron, 94. What is 90, uh, 194? Ni 194 is the page number. Jacob, 55. What is 55? 55 is the page number. Different locations inside the same source, you separate with a comma. So for example, Baron 194, what is 194 page number? 200, what is 200 page number? These two are inside the same paper by Baron. Also, 197, 298, that is two pages. And where are they? They are also all inside the same research paper. So Baron here, here, and here. All the same source, single source. What if it's not the same source? What if there are different sources? Multiple works by the same author. Author use shortened titles joined by the word and. So for example, this is the author. This is one paper. This is another paper. These are two different papers. In APA, we would use the year, the date. But in MLA, we don't use the date. We use the name of the paper. Now, this is not the whole name of the paper. But what we do is we just use the first or second word to help us see that it's different. So Gluck has one paper called Erzat Thought, something, something, something. He wrote something more here. And another paper called for something, 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 something. We don't know what. We need to look at the reference list. But you see, this helps us to tell that these are two papers, two research papers, or two books by Gluck, but they have different names. And I'm citing them in one parentheses here. So my, I have two different papers I'm citing. One paper, two paper, one author. What if you have three or more? And in that case, Gluck, and here's one paper, comma, one paper, comma, and another paper. So here we separate this with and, no comma, and then here we have comma, comma, and, then in the, last, the last one. Now, in this case, these are chapter name. So this is chapter. How do I know it's a chapter? Because it's inside quotation marks. It's part of something bigger. And then forward is actually the forward to the whole book. I think that should be in quotation marks actually too. I think that's wrong. I should have had that in quotation marks because they're part of the whole book. Okay, but you get that point here. Comma, comma, and. Without an author. The key point here is we didn't have an author. Okay, secondary sources. Again, just like the APA, we discourage uh, secondary sources. Secondary sources is you find information through some other source. So you read an article, that article cites another paper. Maybe you're too lazy to find the first paper, so you just use the second paper, copy what they wrote. No, you can't do that. You need to always find your original sources if you're going to cite them. However, there are some cases where you may need to say, I found this information in another paper, not the original paper. And here is an example. Allport's diary, as cited, in Nicholson 132. So as cited, I found it in another article. That article was by Nicholson on page 132. Personal communications, 
such as email. Whoa, 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 cut, 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 going back, but So if you do use a secondary source, such as this example, you would use similar to APA as cited in. So I read this paper here by Nicholson, but Nicholson was saying something about all ports. I cannot find all ports, but I can find Nicholson. So Nicholson talked about all port on page 132. So as cited in this paper on page 132, the information about all ports. A little bit confusing, but I think the main point is avoid secondary sources. Try not to use them. What about private information, memos, emails, that kind of thing? You can go ahead and include them in your MLA paper also. Here you can be very, uh, a little bit more general. It's not as specific uh, a rule as in the APA. So here I would say in 2016 interview. So I had an interview with Bob Lutz. So I interviewed him. So in the text, I just write it very clearly like that. Victor Gates included in his email of May 2017. So here again, this is the person, and what did they do? They wrote an email, and when's it from? So you want to be as specific as possible, but the big difference here is the MLA does not have a very super clear requirement on that. Rather, that's going to go inside the reference list. They just want to make sure the reader knows which reference does this belong to. When I see that you, you're citing an email from Victor Gates, I want to be able to be sure that I can find that inside your reference list. So in this case, the name is clear, Victor Gates, and it's an email. So in my reference list, you can find it. Here would be what the reference list looks like. So this is at the back of the paper. We're going to study this more in the next section we cover, but here is the Lutz. That's the person's name. Last name first, first name last. And it's a personal interview, and it is 20 April 2016. So this is quite different approach from the uh, APA approach. So here, pay attention. You've got the day, the month, and then the year. That's totally different than APA. And there's no commas in there anywhere, nothing. So very different. Watch out. Look at another example here. Let me clear this off. There we go. Gates, Victor, last name first, first name last. Message to the author, 10 May 2017 email. So period, period, see that? Period there. Email is the type. This is extra information. This is a this is the way the APA kind of functions. They want you to kind of get the overall idea rather than very, very specific rules. But again, we're not doing that this section. I'm going to look at that the next section when we talk about the reference list. But there you go. Very cool. The DOI is a digital object identifier. And a DOI is a number that helps people to find exactly where this information is on the internet or in a database. Because information is always changing on the internet, changing its location, if you just give a URL address two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, certainly the URL will probably be changed or the information could be gone. DOI, Digital Object Identifier, is a way that publishers guarantee that as long as you have that number, you can find it at that number in the future. So you will, see, you will see DOIs in all modern publications, especially if you're using the database interface to see them. And when you put them inside of your paper, then 
you will basically follow the same rules as the citation rule. DOIs are mostly used in the reference list, not in the citations, but they can be used in citations if that's all the information you have, for example. Okay, so that covers our MLA citations, that is inside the text of the citations, and I think uh, you get the idea. The most important point to remember is the MLA and APA are very different. And again, these are different from other styles. And every journal could be different in what they want. You need to follow that journal. If you're doing a dissertation or a thesis, probably your school is following either MLA or APA. When you submit a paper, if you're not quite sure of the journal's rules, or sometimes the journals have rules but they're not very detailed, then see which one it follows most. Is it more like MLA or is it more like APA? And choose that one to follow for your research paper. The more you stick to it, the more clear you make it, the easier your path to getting your paper accepted will be. Okay, good luck.